In Digner House is Proud to Release, Officer Down by Michael A. Wexler, a psychological thriller. This is going to be competition for Stephen King and Dean R. Coon. So, okay, old authors, get prepared. This is going to be a little battle of who the new authors are and what your competition will soon be. So let's get into Officer Down by Michael A. Wexler. The things you can do when you're already dead. Detective Frank Statton wanted to retire. His live-in lover, Paige Mallory, demanded it. A quiet exclamation point on a brilliant career. Nothing stood in his way except a broken road of unfinished business between him, his dead partner, internal affairs, two million in missing mob money, and the unforgiving and vengeful spirit of an executed stoolie. An informant with a head for numbers, executed for a crime he did not commit, Jimmy Powers returns from beyond the grave seeking retribution. A fiery apparition bending people, places, and time to his will, forcing the partners to relive the events leading to his death. Remembrance of the strained relationships between the two cops, the women they loved, the mobsters they haunted, and the trust they betrayed. Before the sun of a new day can rise, Frank Statton must face a night of terror and mystery, of lengthening shadows that hide a truth only the bravest souls could survive, let alone solve. Chapter 1. Detective Frank Stanton knew where he stood. He was on the balcony of the Reno Theater. He recognized the textured walls with glowering cherubs muted as desert sand. A possissium arch and bare stage lit by slivers of moonlight falling through high stained glass windows. The orchestra pit stretched out like an open wound toward empty rows of red velvet seats. A majestic theater once, years ago, the Reno that Frank remembered was bankrupt, just a shut and shattered relic lost to the shifting fortunes of time and taste. Frank knew where he stood, but not how he got there, why, or when. The impossible contradictions buckled his knees. Sickening waves of nausea forced him to lean against the gilded railing, reality floating dimly and distant beyond his reach. A nightmare Frank wished would end. Crack! A bullet exploded out of the blackness, appealing thunder shattering the hellish silence. Whistling past his ear, Frank reached for his gun, but his hands fumbled, shaking. Young hands, Frank knew, should be old and spotted, far older than the impossible resurrected theater around him. But he rallied. With a defiant cry, Frank steadied and answered the unseen shooter. He shot a 9 millimeter slug into the shadows, aimed by gut and guess, and finding nothing. In its wake, a cold, hollow laugh floated out of the empty air, wrapping Frank in an impending sense of horror. Where's the money, Frank? The voice taunted him as bare knuckles launched from out of the darkness, crunching his jaw. His head snapped back, and Frank tumbled over the balcony rail. The carpet aisle rushed at him, a sea of red breaking his fall. He landed with a dismal thud, pain shrouding his judgment. His back stiffened, and his twisted ankle ached. A foot in either direction, and iron seat backs would have broken his neck. But for now, he grabbed onto them, clawing for cover, fearful of the next move from his unseen assailant. His head throbbed, not with physical pain, but with an old, tormented ache that Frank believed had long since been buried and forgotten. Where's the money, Frank? His breath fell in hot, rhythmic gas that flooded the theater with scalding steam. He tried to swallow, but his throat felt dry. His legs burned. He settled for cursing the silent cherubs now mocking his plight. The taunting, invisible laughter had returned, a palpable evil that dropped out of the ether with an iciness that drove the heat aside and caused Frank's teeth to chatter. His watering eyes swept the empty auditorium, empty as his memory, but someone had fired that damn shot and cold cocked him over the railing, and some one or something had asked that fucking question. Where's the money, Frank? Struggling with a cold sweat and a perverse dead, 
Frank battled an ill-advised urge to run. He growled as his ankle throbbed. Whatever else he had forgotten, Frank remembered his years of police training that hardened a man's instincts, turning him into someone who no one took for granted. With a growing misplaced defiance, Frank hobbled up the aisle, making himself a willing target and challenging the resolve of the unseen shooter. He was daring his hidden adversary to expose himself. Frank watched, gun in hand, for the glint of a barrel, a hint of movement, anything that would betray the body attached to that rocking fist, a finger on a trigger. Crack! The thunder broke again and a bullet launched. Instinctive or nerve, Frank wasn't sure, but he didn't flinch. He stood fixed like the watching cherubs as the bullet burrowed into the padded seat by his leg. No audience, no applause. His eyes locked on the afterglow of the blast, smiling Frank's finger closed on the trigger. Shooting a dead man, Frank? His finger froze, arm shortening in an involuntary jerk of surprise, head racing to catalog that voice. A nasal whine, thick with a south end twang that Frank knew but couldn't place. A fresh round of uncertainty punched at his gut, sending renewed ripples up his already aching spine. The coldness suffusing Frank expanded, filling the distance from the floor to the ceiling. A shadowy form flickered into the existence at the balcony rail. Multiplying folds of darkness held a figure in torn jeans, a black vest, t-shirt, and biker-style boots. A wiry frame and sinister face, accented by greasy black hair, shallow cheeks, and a pasty, acne-pocked complexion. Above a too thin nose and thinner lips, fiery red eyes glowed like a stoked furnace on a cold winter's night. What's the matter, detective? Don't you remember me? Powers? Jimmy Powers. The incredulous recognition brought the frozen Beretta roaring back to life. Four quick blasts spanned the space from floor to balcony in a lethal instant. Frank could only watch, horrified as the tendinous figure shimmered, faded, and reformed as a puff of smoke through which the racing bullets plowed, harmless as wind across a sail. Frank didn't know about dead men, but wondered whether he could kill a nightmare. Confused, Frank? It's actually quite simple. I'm dead. Dead to everyone but you. You see, I've come back, Frank. Back to find the fucking money. Frank wanted to scream. Wanted but couldn't. Look around the theater, Frank. I hope you appreciate the symbolism. The curtain is about to go up on a shitload of forgotten ugliness. Wherever you go, whatever you do, these dead eyes will be there to watch, to learn. When you stumble, I'll hold you up. When you beg me to leave you alone, I'll laugh. I am the last drag on your cigarette burning your fingers. We're going to find the truth, Frank. The truth no matter who gets hurt. Cop killer Jimmy Powers, dead and buried, but as impossibly resurrected as the no longer padlocked and boarded theater, melted into the shadows. He slowly faded until nothing remained but a dark and ominous voice rattling in Frank's head like nails tossed in a tin drum. Ain't it something, Frank, the things you can do when you're already dead? Michael A. Wexler was born and raised in Philadelphia, an accomplished guitarist. He's had an exciting and enriching musical youth, privileged to work alongside Jimi Hendrix, Ike and Tina Turner, Chuck Berry, and others. Placing his musical skills aside, Michael now tackles writing. Officer Down is his debut novel, a psychological thriller that explores the heart and mind of an inner city cop. Make sure you get your copy today of Officer Down, available where all wonderful books are sold.